here we are with the Mellotron Micro. Now, I do play a little bit of guitar, but I would not say I'm a guitar player. And playing guitar is really hard for me. And every time you've ever heard me play guitar, it's been basically a trick. I can finger pluck parts on a guitar, but like this part, it would take me a very long time to learn it. So it's really cool for me to be able to play a guitar sound that has this unique character with this instrument. And it makes me insanely happy. Now, granted, if I were to record record uh, me playing a guitar in this day and age, people would be like, that guitar sounds terrible. It's weird and muddy and etc." And that's because what we're talking about <laughs> are tape recordings from the 60s, uh, or I think 60s, perhaps 70s, 60s and 70s, tape recordings that have been painstakingly recorded digitally. So what's happening is you're getting these sounds that not only are, quote, samples, but they're recordings on tape that were made a very long time ago. And so they have this character, this unnatural beauty and distortion and muddiness and, uh, and like pitch variation that happens with tape. You're getting two different effects here. Number one, the musical instrument that's being recorded. Number two, the effects of the tape that it was recorded on. So that's the reason why the Mellotron is so special. It's not just that it sounds like other instruments. It's not so much about its mechanics. It's the fact that these are, you're playing very old recordings on old media. Now, granted in the, uh, in this digital version, you're <laughs> thankfully not playing it on old media. It's, uh, uncompressed digital recordings of the original tapes. So uh, you're just getting, you're, you're forever going to have, uh, you're never gonna, it's never gonna fail. You're never gonna have to fix a pinch roller or whatever. So that's really nice. And they have painstakingly sampled, or yeah, sampled every single note for eight seconds. So one of the reasons this thing is, is so expensive is that you've got a lot of memory in here. Uh, basically, you know, there's all of these instruments and then every note of all of these instruments is, you know, eight seconds of it is recorded. That is a lot of notes. So uh, yeah, it's really a special thing and it gives you the, the audio outcome of sounding like you're actually playing a Mellotron. Now I have had uh, I have some old emu samples of Mellotrons that I have used in songs and they sound to the untrained ear like, oh, there's a Mellotron, there it is, sounds great. But really, you know, like on most samplers, you've got, you know, this note sampled, then this note sampled, and then this note sampled or whatever. So all of these intermediary notes are other samples sped up or slowed down. You're not getting that with the Mellotron Micro. These are all individual samples. Uh, Let's switch to a sound that's held so we can, uh, let's see what's something. Like a French horn. There's no loop there. So you're not, there's no point at which this natural sample suddenly gets a little bit robotic so that it can go on forever. You don't get that. Uh, you get eight seconds and you'd better be happy with it because uh, <laughs> that's all you get. But the, the trade-off is that it sounds like a real instrument for eight seconds. There's no looping, you know? And then every single note has that. So there's a certain realism that can be achieved. So if I'm making a recording, even not one that's like, hey, this is a Mellotron, listen to this really Mellotronic sounds, you know, I'm just like actually doing a score and I need a French horn. I'm gonna get a realistic French horn if I know the range of the French horn and know where to play it, etc. Um, but it's going to be realistic. And if I play chords, there are going to be the natural variations that are consistent with not only an instrumentalist holding a note for that long, but also the sort of pleasing and natural sounding variations added by the tape that it was once recorded on.
And so often I will hear scores, and I'm sure you do too, uh, where people have used sampled instruments. And like I'm a, I can tell a real string section uh, really quite easily. So a lot of times I'll be watching a movie and the string part will come in and I'll be like, those aren't real strings. It'll sound like artificial and unrealistic. These will never do that unless you play them in a weird way that, you know, horn players... <laughs> horn players would never do. Um, but yeah, so it is a very, it's a fantastic paradigm, a really special paradigm that allows you to make really realistic instrument sounds, even if you're not trying to celebrate the Mellotron for being the Mellotron, which is also fun to do. So what we're going to talk about, that's basically what we're, we're working with. You know, in the original, of course, like we said, uh, there was a tape, a player per key, there was a strip of tape per key that had the recording of that instrument. So it used to be that you would have, you know, a few tape racks, which had all of these tapes dangling off of them that allowed you to play these sounds. And so if you had a Mellotron, you might only be able to do the string patch or the string patch and the flute patch, or I can't remember the combinations that they used to come with. But what you could not do is have a hundred sounds <laughs> that were all different. That would require a bazillion tape racks. You'd have to be fabulously wealthy. So this is really a special thing for us to be able to do. And I got to say, even the two octave keyboard doesn't get in the way of the joy that can be delivered with this thing. And uh, yeah, okay, so let's talk a little bit about how this thing actually functions. It is really a very basic functionality here. Uh, we have a wide variety of uh, instruments that are accessible via these two screens and these two knobs. There's two different channels. You can have two different sounds at once that you can either overlap or play individually. So basically right now we have A, corresponding with select A, we have a French horn. And then B, we have acoustic guitar. So I've been switching it back and forth between A and B, but this is a variable thing, so like you can have a mix in the middle. And you, in the midst of your performance, get to decide to what degree you want those two sounds to mix or not, which is super helpful. But there's also uh, other things you can do. For example, let me see if I can find, uh, this might happen, it might take a second here. Well, this is a good idea. Okay, here is brass. <laughs> Wrong patch to try this with. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm gonna try and find something better than that. I guess we could have gone with a choir, but. I wanna show you how you can, I know for a fact that the, well, let's see what the. You can t make bigger sounds. It's not just like you've got French horn here and muted brass here and you can switch between them or mix them both. You can actually reinforce sounds that you have by choosing, like there's multiple pianos, there's multiple flutes, and you can balance them and make them fuller by including two of them simultaneously. And keep in mind that means that in all of these instances, we ha each of these notes has a full uncompressed eight second sample playing on it. So you get this really, this wonderful realism. Whereas that all would have been either or, but with both you have a, a bigger uh, brass section. And so you can make these choices that are not only like I want this instrument here or this instrument here, or I like this weird combination of these two different, different instruments by mixing instruments that are, you know, related. 
you are making orca- orchestration choices, which is really a cool thing, if you ask me. Is there another? Oh, probably not in the same place. Ooh, piano and harpsichord. <laughs> That just makes kind of a synthesizer thing, but still. Uh, you can definitely reinforce some of your sounds. Uh, so you've got that going on, which is, it's really great. So they've really done a great job of creating something. You're not just playing a Mellotron. You're actually playing like two Mellotrons simultaneously where you have complete access to all of the individual parts, all of the different sounds, which you wouldn't have. And then you can mix and match and overlay them and switch in between them. It's really a great paradigm within which to play.